Jeep Wrangler is an icon that has managed to remain loyal to its roots while adapting to the changing spirit of the times. If you think that it's strictly for Californian rock hoppers and D-list boy band members, think again. This latest JL series model is the most credible Wrangler yet, justifying what Jeep sees as its position as the only true off-road company in the market. Previous Wranglers never had to be very good on road, as long as they didn't shake your fillings out on the way to your surf shack, or would be forgiven once you set a tyre on the rough stuff. But Marlboro men are in short supply these days, and to keep this car in customers, Jeep had to appeal beyond those who might use their cars as weekend mountain playthings, without diluting what makes a Wrangler a Wrangler. No small task. How successful you'll perceive the designer's efforts to have been depends whether you've experienced previous versions of this Jeep. If you haven't, then you're likely to find the wind noise, the rumbly demeanour and the vague steering all pretty crude. Those coming to this car from an older Wrangler, though, will find this JL series model a vast improvement. The revised steering's much better and the revised five-link suspension means that potholes no longer feel like craters. The main changes, though, with this Mark IV design have taken place beneath the bonnet. Buyers now choose between a 200 horsepower, 2.2 litre multi jet diesel or the 272 horsepower, 2 litre petrol turbo unit we're trying here. Both engines available only mated to a slicker shifting 8 speed auto gearbox. The NEDC figures suggest that an entry level four door petrol variant can deliver 31.4 mpg on the combined cycle with a CO2 reading of 210 grams per kilometre, and such a Wrangler would be able to tug along up to two and a half tonnes. As with all proper off roaders, there's a two speed transfer case offering a series of dedicated 4x4 driving settings 4H, 4H part time, and the 4 low crawler gear. With a slightly more road-orientated Sahara and Overland variants, all this works through a command track four-wheel drive system, but with this more serious top Rubicon derivative, there's a heavy-duty rock track four-wheel drive setup, which uses a tougher low-range crawler ratio. Rubicon models also get detachable sway bars for extra suspension travel. Heavy-duty Dana front and rear axles that can be manually locked with the brand's TrueLock electric front and rear axle lockers and Narlia BF Goodrich 32-inch tyres. All of this delivers an extreme level of off-road capability and once you've experienced it, you'll view this Jeep in a whole different light. The Wrangler format is iconic. A simple boxy body dropped onto an old style ladder frame chassis with a folding screen, detachable doors and a removable roof. You don't mess with that. Or with the familiar frontage, which offers up the usual circular headlights and familiar seven slot grille. Elsewhere around the car, all the usual Wrangler hallmarks are present and correct. The separate bumpers, the outboard spare wheel and extended wheel arches flared at angles similar to those of the original Willys Jeep. Look more closely though and you'll find that much has changed as the designers have sought to subtly evolve the look for this fourth generation JL series model. That front grille, for instance, now has a canted upper section and its outer slats intersect with headlights that now feature full LED beams from Magneti Morelli. Even this vertical windscreen is different. It's now not quite so vertical and features a new four bolt design at the top of the frame that allows it to fold down far more easily. Though you've still got to get your socket set out to do it. Okay, time to take a seat up front. Now, you're faced with a dashboard structure as bluff as the north face of the Eiger, but it's much more appealing than the boring plasticky layout that characterised the interior of the previous JK series model. The coloured fascia frontage aims to reference the metal panel dashboards used in much earlier Wranglers, and the previous tightly sectioned centre stack has given way to a more open layout, though one absolutely festooned with knobs and buttons. Everything's of much better quality than anything that buyers of this model have seen before. Plus, there's a sophisticated 8.8 inch sensor dash, Uconnect infotainment screen, and a further seven inch TFT display between the conventional dials in the instrument binnacle. We should talk about the open air aspect. All Wranglers come as standard with a three piece modular hardtop with these lift off front panels. 
The rear section must be removed with a socket set. If you don't like the thought of that, you can specify a Sunrider soft top that folds back either manually or electrically instead. With the roof fully down, the doors removed and the windscreen folded, the Wrangler driving experience really is like nothing else. Let's take a seat in the rear. Now this four door model's extra half meter of length might make possible a properly sized rear seat, but it doesn't deliver doors that open with a very wide aperture. And once you're inside, it's not hugely comfortable either, though it's obviously a huge improvement on the cramped conditions you'd get in the alternative two door model. We thought legroom might be an issue here, but actually we think you get more complaints about the rather upright backrests for occupants on a longer trip. Still, if your driver has removed the doors and you're travelling al fresco open to the elements, you won't care about any of that. Travelling in the back on an SUV isn't usually an experience to be in any way savoured, but in a Wrangler, it can be. <laughs> Let's finish with a look at the boot. Once everything's opened up, there's a 533 litre boot, which ought to be bigger, but can't be because it's compromised by the tubular structural beams and the sighting of this huge audio speaker on the right hand side here. There's no ski hatch or 40, 20, 40 rear seat split for longer items. So if you need more room, you'll need to push forward the 60, 40 split rear seats. That frees up 1,044 litres of space. You've still got to be serious about hardcore off-road driving to consider a Jeep Wrangler, but not quite as serious as you had to be before. If previous generation versions of this Jeep weren't for you, you probably still won't like this one. No problem, the market's stacked with compromised alternatives. But if you've always wanted an excuse to choose one of these, this JL series model's extra polish and newfound sophistication provides it. It's now a vastly more capable all-rounder, but it's still very much a Wrangler, and that's all that really matters. <laughs>